Following a disappointing month of August, both FC Cincinnati and St. Louis FC turn the page, hoping to start September off on the right foot. It's a crucial match to wrap up Labor Day weekend on a sun-splashed Monday. Good afternoon and welcome to Nippert Stadium on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. Tom Galletter, happy to be alongside All-American Kevin McCloskey as we get you set right here on Labor Day. Absolutely perfect weather and a huge opportunity, Kevin, for FC Cincinnati as we take a look at the USL standings in the Eastern Conference. FC Cincinnati suddenly in sixth place, but a win today can cure all ills and bump them right back to third. Yeah, I think after the, the two tough road games as well that they had, you know, over the course of the last two weeks, I think it'd be very important to come back with a good performance, looking for a response from the players, I'm sure John is and, and Ryan. So it'll be good if they can get three points and get back into position, all good. Today's injury report is brought to you by TyTech Medical, compact pre-hospital medical supplies for trauma care. For more information, visit TyTechMedical.com. And only one injury there for FC Cincinnati. It happened the last time the club was home here at Nippert Stadium. That is Omar Cummings. He is out with a knee injury. It was announced last week. He is out several weeks, so we don't expect to see him again in the regular season. That's a big loss for this club. It's a huge impact. You know, obviously a veteran guy like Omar that's, that's bringing goals. I, I really felt like he was hitting a stride, you know, before that game. So it, it's another big opportunity for other forwards from FC Cincinnati to play big. You know, they've got to produce it and get somewhere in front of them. Well, tonight's key matchup is brought to you by Volkswagen and what do you have there? I think James Musa for uh, for St. Louis will be a big player. Um, he's the, the type of guy that's really the heartbeat of their team. Um, gets involved in a lot, you know, so he's going to be very much a centerpiece for them. And I think on FC Cincinnati's side, I think Wiedemann, you know, trying to kind of stop James Musa a little bit from playing and also trying to get it forward a lot today and support Ugo in the attack. Well, FC Cincinnati will look to bounce back in a big way with Andrew Wiedemann and the lads leading the way. They get that opportunity against St. Louis FC. Starters and a check-in from the pitch. Coming up next, this is FC Cincinnati Soccer. A perfect Monday afternoon here on Labor Day for FC Cincinnati and St. Louis FC to meet for the second time this season. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by your local Toyota dealers, where you could start your next adventure in the first ever RAV4 Hybrid. And the starting lineup tonight, first for John Harks. You see Mitch Hildebrandt there. Of course, he has started every game this year, but had some controversy since the last time we had a broadcast for you from Nippert Stadium. We'll talk about that as we go along and the change in the starting lineup. Alvaro Anton Rapol getting his second consecutive start in the 11 for John Harks. Of course, he made his debut on August 24th here at Nippert Stadium. At the other end for St. Louis, Mark Pace, the goalkeeper, Sam Fink, a, a player that a few of the FC Cincinnati guys are very familiar with because they all played together at Wake Forest. The biggest note for St. Louis, they are without their leading scorer, Irvin Herrera, 11 goals on the season as he is with El Salvador's men's national team. The third member of our broadcast team is Lindsey Patterson. Let's go down to the pitch on a warm afternoon and check in with her for the first time. Guys, 
and just like that, we have a soccer field here. It takes about 36 hours to transform the field from a football field. They take out two center pieces, two end zone pieces. They have a tank that's located in the corner tunnel of the end zone that washes all the football lines off here. And I can tell you right now, it's a little warm down on this field. Certainly appears to be a hot day. The weather has been absolutely perfect this entire Labor Day weekend. A large crowd in excess of 15,000 is expected to wrap up the weekend with a special 430 start. And you see FC Cincinnati in their traditional blue home kits. St. Louis will be in white. And Kevin, we talked about it a little bit. A huge opportunity. It was a frustrating road trip, no question. Two losses on the road at Charlotte and before that at New York. But now back at home where this team has been very good. The opportunity to bounce back and in a very big way. You talked about the setting and the fans and the support. I think that's the medicine exactly what FC Cincinnati need on that return. You know, it's going to be a massive boost for them to, to kind of push their spurts a little bit higher. And I'm sure these guys are going to be very hungry to get points back on the board. John Harks, no doubt, hoping for three points to bounce right back up to third place where the club has sat most of the season. The home record this year for FC Cincinnati, seven, two, and four. So they have been very good here at home. Their two losses to Louisville City back in April, who's in second place in the East. And then on July 20th, two to one to New York Red Bulls too, who is in first place and has the best record in the USL. So no shame in those two losses. St. Louis will control first as the second meeting. This season between these two clubs is underway. FC Cincinnati won on the road at St. Louis, two to one back on July 9th at Worldwide Technology Park. Goalkeeper Mark Pace, a St. Louis native, decked out in all red today. Will control it on his foot, and they'll allow St. Louis to work it along their back line. The Bailey already rocking, a lot of enthusiasm from the FC Cincinnati faithful St. Louis. Quickly in the offensive third with a look, comes off the foot of Plumhoff. And then he'll pull it out into the corner. Jordan Roberts was there as well, deflected away from him, and a throw in deep in their own defensive end coming for FC Cincinnati. Looks like St. Louis are going to be starting in a 4-4-2 here as well. They're, you know, looking to press. They're going to try to rattle FC Cincinnati. Obviously, the last two results haven't gone FC Cincinnati's way, so I, I think you'll see St. Louis trying to take advantage, advantage of that and kind of start quick if they can. Kenny Walker trying to win it in the midfield and a foul will be called on the far side and St. Louis slow to get up after the foul was committed. Today's keys to the match are presented by Toyota for all Toyota offers including those not seen on TV go to Toyota's official website for deals at buy at Toyota.com and your first one there comes right off of what we were just talking about in Players being real positive and knowing what's at stake after the tough week. Yeah, I think what you know, John and Ryan are looking for is a reaction, you know, a positive reaction in, in everything that they do. Um, you'll see this obviously throughout the game, but it, it, it's going to be something where one guy probably sets that standard, right? The first tackle made or the first big save, and then from that, everyone else goes on. And the second cue really is, is you know, can they be tough, you know, mentally and physically? Can they be tough? Can they come and take care of St. Louis? Uh, I think, and we all think, I, I think that. They have the manpower to do that, but we've not seen it yet. You know, they've not been that convincing at home yet. So I think today would be a great day to see that. We will see the first corner kick of the match. It's brought to you by the Levy Law offices. It will come from the near side after the restart. Free kick was headed away by Harrison Delbridge. Tyler David was trying to track it down to come all the way out to midfield. Patrick Duty sends it back right into the chest of Mitch Hildebrandt. No trouble there. Of course, Mitch Hildebrandt. Was involved in a bit of controversy last week at Red Bull Arena. We talked about it on our last broadcast on August 24th, video assisted refereeing, and where it would come into the game. They've been testing it in New York, and 10 minutes into the match, Mitch Hildebrandt was the victim of it. He received a red card after a close play in the box. Turns out Red Bulls, too, were offside, so the red card should have never come out. And Mitch Hildebrandt should have never been sent off. His red card was rescinded. He was able to start and play. Didn't find out till late Tuesday night. He was able to start and play on Wednesday against Charlotte. And of course, FC Cincinnati in a tight one lost three to two. I think that that game in New York was tough. You know, it was even the, the penalty with uh, Sean O'Coley with a tackle. Right. I mean, it's it's two tough kind of calls against that the team and. 
really they're leaving New York scratching their heads and you know what just happened. No, they played pretty and when well. you consider that Mitch was sent off in the 10th minute. Oh well, exactly. And then played a man down against the best team in the league and the numbers prove that great touch forward to Jimmy McLaughlin getting into the offensive third. Lock will back it off to Polak who fed it to him. Now Polak keeping it alive. Still has it. Onto his left foot, sent into the middle. There's Kenny Walker deflected. And it goes out along the end line as that ball was ping-ponging around. Wildly dangerous. And Sean Acoli nearly redirected it in. Yeah, great drive from Tyler. Keeps going, persistent with it. Picks out Kenny Walker just in the middle as he comes into the frame here. A good first time strike. So I love the intent by uh, Tyler Pollard. Nice job defensively there by St. Louis to do their best to stymie FC Cincinnati. Sean O'Coley was right there sniffing around that, that second ball as well, which is good to see. Just missed his left foot. You know, we talked about off the top in the open, FC Cincinnati is without Omar Cummings. We don't expect to see him again here in the regular season as he has been ruled out for several weeks was how the release was worded last week. But still plenty of opportunities for guys to score offensively no shortage of offensive weapons in orange and blue Jimmy McLaughlin sporting a new hairdo is one of them ball goes out it'll be a throw in the offensive third Jimmy has joined teammates Corbin Bone and Ross Tomaselli with the platinum blonde look which we talked to Jimmy it looks a little bit better because he's a natural blonde so Tyler Pollock is fouled right in front of FC Cincinnati's bench and Corbin Bone will bring it back into play I think Omar obviously is a massive loss, you know. Uh, but one thing FC Cincinnati being able to do all season long is really bring different players in, you know, kind of change the starting lineup a little bit in that front three, and they've done it again, you know, with, with Sean and uh, Jimmy McLaughlin coming back onto the left, and then Alvaro getting his chance to start on the right. So, be interesting to see how that three kind of interplay tonight. Sets up Andrew Wiedemann to sit behind of Sean Acoli. Much like Omar Cummings was doing when the two of them were in there together. Kenny Walker sliding it off to his left. Rapole able to pick it up. Leaves it for Bone. Sends it across and just a hair too strong for Sean Acoli. But Ugo able to track it down before it rolls out in the corner. I think what you'll see from Wiedemann is really getting forward to support Sean tonight. So at times this might even look like a 4-4-2 with two target forwards depending on his support. Acoli was taken down on the far touch line. There was no call for a foul. St. Louis quickly back into the midfield and good to see that Ugo's up and okay. St. Louis trying to get back to the offensive third. And we'll go back and take a look. Yeah, nice that's, little bit of footwork. Yeah, it's a clear foul, Could right? Foul. I think what he did, he, he played the advantage. I think that ball came out to Kenny Walker, so good referee. There's Rapole making his second consecutive start. Back to Austin Berry, back to Berry and Delbridge playing as the center backs for John Harts. We've seen a few variations in the back with Paul Nicholson. He's not in the 11 today, but he is available to come off the bench, and that gives John Harts a great substitute to bring in defensively and see where he fits as this match wears on. Right. Paul's definitely been very versatile as the seasons went on. He went into center back, I think, when Austin first got hurt. A Coley trying to chip it up to Wiedemann didn't work out. Broken up by St. Louis. Picked up in the midfield by Jordan Roberts. Roberts trying to turn on it. Misses. Delbridge gets it. And now back to Barry, who will slow things down. A little bit of a frantic pace here in the first yeah. seven plus minutes. We are scoreless in the eighth minute. I think talking with John this week, too, he kind of predicted it would be a very scrappy game. And that's obviously one of the keys why I talked about physical and mental toughness. Both teams are going to be going at it tonight. Polak trying to send it across. Intercepted and picked up by St. Louis. Hardware, Jamil Hardware, was the one who intercepted the pass. Then St. Louis loses it right back to the orange and blue. Walker sending it up the near touch line, right onto the foot of McLaughlin. McLaughlin will send it in. Much more dangerous Rapole there. Rapole was looking for the header, broken up, and a corner kick coming up. Grip all in from Kenny Cincinnati. Walker. You know, picking up all up, and he's driving it about 50 yards into a position where Jimmy wants to get it. You know, in front of the defender, taking 1v1, try to get a service or maybe a quick shot off, and that's exactly the service that Jimmy needs. 
Tyler Pollock will go over to take the corner. It's brought to you by the Levy Law Offices, where they turn your crash into cash. Pollock will swing it with his left foot. Austin Berry playing up as a target, as is Harrison Delbridge. Here it comes, headed away. Sam Fink got his head onto it. Then Plumhoff will put it straight into the air. And Jimmy McLaughlin trying to track it down along the touchline. Loses control. Patrick Duty was there, the defender out of Naperville, Illinois. I think he ran out of space a little bit there. Yeah, no doubt. Ran out of real estate and yeah. nowhere left to go. Jimmy was doing everything he could to keep it into play for FC Cincinnati. It was tough. St. Louis as well, you can say you talked about kind of the high intensity, but both teams are really pressing each other. So you know, they're going to try to force mistakes. They're going to try to win the game really in transition. Both so these clubs had a tough month of August. It's been 33 days since FC Cincinnati won a match. Ten more for St. Louis FC. They haven't won a match in 43 days. July 23rd was the last time they were victorious. So both teams hungry for three points and a lot at stake. We mentioned FC Cincinnati with a win goes right back into third place. St. Louis FC, despite what's been a frustrating year, not out of the player playoff picture entirely. If they could put together a good run to end the year, then they could weasel their way right back in right. to the playoff picture. I think just the position that, that St. Louis are in right now, obviously they have an interim head coach. Now those players are trying to make their mark and, and kind of start start in the 11 and stay in the 11 if they can. So they're, they're coming out and trying to, to make a name for themselves as well. St. Louis after tonight will have three matches left. If they won them all, they could sneak into the Western Conference playoffs, depending on how else things play out. Kenny Walker misfires as he was trying to get it to Corbin Bone. St. Louis will get a throw in. They are led by Tim Leonard, the interim coach, is 0-1 and 2 since taking over on August 15th when Dale Shilly was let go. You can see right there just another example of pressing, St. Louis are pressing in twos and threes, you know, which is obviously going to impact FC Cincinnati's possession a little bit. St. Louis cheating up a bit on the throw in. Will now have to back it off, and Richard Dixon will come over, a defender out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Actually born in Hanover, Jamaica. And then his family, as a youngster, moved him to West Palm Beach, played for West Florida from 2009 to 2012. Second season with St. Louis. Now it'll be James Musa, the defender from England, to throw it in. Musa will fire it towards the six yard box, headed away by FC Cincinnati and cleared by Wiedemann. It's kind of unusual as well to see a central midfield player taking the throw in. It doesn't happen quite a lot. Coley was trying to win the header in midfield and had a collision. One of the St. Louis players is still down following it. That's Mitch Lurie, the defender out of Atlanta. It's based on how he landed, really. And he is up and trotting down the pitch. Let's quickly go down to the pitch and check in with the third member of our broadcast team. Her reports are brought to you by Volkswagen. Lindsay. Guys, this week's all about bouncing back. Talk to some of the coaches, and they said, hey, last week was rough, but we got to put all that behind us. Training was good this week. They just have to bring that sharpness and intensity to this match today. Ball played forward for Sean Acoli. He'll pick it up on his right foot then cleared away by Mitch Lurie. You see Cincinnati waste no time bringing it back into play. Start to see the shadows a little bit yeah. creeping out across the field. Usually about six o'clock the entire pitch is in the shade. So these guys are playing in the sun for the most part yeah. for most of the afternoon. Here comes Pat McMahon with a pretty ball into the box. Sean Acoli had it on his foot, tried across. to pull it in. It was McMahon first splitting two defenders, and then he played it perfectly to Hugo. Yeah, the problem really is just behind him. You know, uh, great ball or great drive in from Pat. And Sean just needs to hold off a little bit on his run. A ball in from Pat if he can play it just a, a yard in front, and that should be a goal, really. 
We remain scoreless in the 14th minute. Mark Pace, the goalkeeper, making his 18th appearance of the season. He grew up in St. Louis. From 2009 to 2011, he attended St. Louis University, then went to Tulsa for his senior year. And in 2015, he signed with St. Louis FC, now in his second year, made eight, eight starts last season. That's been a for a pull with a great run down the far touchline. We'll send it across. McLaughlin picks it up just outside the 18. Jimmy back to Rapol. Now Polak. Corbin Bone. Over to Rapol. Wiedemann heading in the direction to McLaughlin. A Coley picking it up. And it looked like a foul at the top of the 18. No whistle. Arms were wrapped around Sean Coley. Pat McMahon into the box. Just looking at that last picture, Tommy, too, how many FC Cincinnati players are in the box. You know, that, I mean, that's, that's great to see. The play that all started really was Oliver Rapol, too. You'll see this. We talked about it earlier, how tight, you know, he was being marked. And just that little bit of skill to get around him. Wiedemann with a great decision to leave it for Polak. Polak crossing it. Ugo off his shoulder. Same again. And then Rapol trying to get to it. And it seems like FC Cincinnati getting closer and closer and doing a great job of creating these offensive opportunities. Yeah, I mean, a, a tactical principle in it, you know, getting forward is getting bodies in the box too, and they've done that every time. So this is great to see. Great start, great energy from uh, FC Cincinnati. Both Rapol and Wiedemann were there. If that ball bounces funny away from Mark Pace, very well the home club could be on top 1-0. St. Louis working in the midfield. Tyler David. As his pass intercepted by Tyler Pollock, like you said, read it perfectly. Good read, yeah, 100%. And just couldn't hold on to it as was intended for hardware. No, I, I, I've been very impressed with Tyler and Pat McBonds. You know, not only are they defending, but they're attacking well too. So they're they're definitely dialed into this game. Sixteenth minute, Tom Glitter, Kevin McCloskey, Lindsey Patterson, happy to be with you. Our fourteenth regular season USL match. One more to come. Hard to believe that the summer has gone by as fast as it has. A corner coming up here for St. Louis. Jason Plumoff does a good job there for St. Louis too, kind of running down and, and forcing Pat to, to put over for a corner. It's really a nothing ball too, you know. Corner kick is brought to you by the Levy Law Offices, where they turn your crash. Into cash. Contact them today at 513 651 cash. Corner kick will come from the far side and sails over everybody. And Mitch Hildebrand will tell his guys to let it slowly bounce out along the end line and gladly take the goal kick with no danger. Couldn't have asked for much better weather. Here this afternoon to wrap up Labor Day. Hope everybody had a great Saturday and Sunday. And appreciate you joining us tonight. Sean Coley will collide with Richard Dixon right along the touchline. Somehow that's a throw in as a Coley used his size to box out a little bit. Yeah, well, space, right? I mean, yeah. And now a Coley is taken down by Richard Dixon, who we just had that collision with. Dangerous area right here, Tommy. Oh, yeah. This is going to be maybe a yard outside of the 18. Yeah. Just clipped the back here and it went on. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the biggest advantage really from this is the angle that's created. You know, it's going to be tough. It just depends on the delivery. It's not really going to be the shot. It could be a touching shot, but more of a delivery. So you can put this into an area where the goalkeeper's got to come or at least make a decision. and. Hopefully a player gets on the end of it. Right now a handful of options standing over the ball. Kenny Walker, Andrew Wiedemann, Corbin Bone will talk it over. Tyler Pollock is there as well. Of course, he can strike it with his left foot. Thinking a right footer, honestly, trying to whip that into the back post. Just depends on the goalkeeper too. He could kind Look, of cheat and go to the front post too, depending on how the wall's set up. Looks like it's going to be Corbin Bone. It will be with his right foot deflected away. Tyler Pollock screening off Dixon. Defender did and well to get roll out. Austin Berry had come forward, as did Harrison Delbridge, to be an extra target. 
Flex off of Corbin Bone off the throw in. And back to St. Louis. Foul will be called in the midfield, and St. Louis will get a free kick. Just a little bit of contact, I think, as he was jumping from Austin Berry there. Last win for St. Louis FC, as I mentioned, was July 23rd. That was 2-1 to one against Colorado Springs. Right now they sit in 13th place in the West with 30 points. Goal differential on the season, plus one for St. Louis. We are scoreless here in the 20th minute. Long ball sent for Dixon. Picks it up just outside the 18. Polak will come over to provide the defensive pressure. And Dixon deflects it off of Tyler Polak. So a corner kick coming up for St. Louis. Corner kick is brought to you by the Levy Law Offices, where they turn your crash into cash. Mitch Lurie will come over to take it, playing his second year for St. Louis. Just got to be careful. They've got a couple of big targets, Tyler David, Number 12, and then Jordan Roberts as well as a big target. Larry sending it in. Delbridge will head it out. Come on, Hardware comes over to collect. Deflected in the direction of Hildebrandt, lands right in his chest as Tyler David got a piece of it. Delbridge pushing it up the near sideline. Good first touch there by Sean. Onto the foot of a Coley. Does well. Does really well. And he breaks away from two defenders. And trying to send it over to Andrew Wiedemann. Ball is loose. Wiedemann oh. trying to pick it up and couldn't regain his balance. A golden opportunity for the FC Cincinnati forward to give the men in orange and blue an early advantage. Credit to Wiedemann. He doesn't stop his run. You know, Sean tries to play a ball in. Actually overhit it, but there was a little bit of confusion between the goalkeeper and the defender. You'll see here again. You know, I think he overplays this a little bit. Just it's in between both of them. Wiedemann does great to kind of follow that run in, and it's just unlucky it doesn't fall for him. And he tried to sweep it. You saw as yeah. he was getting up with his foot. If he had just got enough touch on it, he may have been the first one to jump up and get to it. But a great opportunity in the 21st minute for Andrew Wiedemann. But he comes up empty and we remain scoreless. Here's Rapol just outside the 18. Touches it off to Wiedemann. Wiedemann trying to send it in. Ball's deflected. Patrick Duty got a piece of it. Back to Rapol. Rapol working in the 18. Rapol knocked down. This is where he's No foul is called. Jimmy McLaughlin was trying to pick it up in St. Louis. Wise to send it out of play. Mitch Lurie came over defensively. This is where Alvaro Rapol is very dangerous, you know, in tight areas. Especially kind of attracting pressure to it. Not only will he get past the player, he may draw a foul too. You know, this may end up in a penalty. Whether they can kind of find his feet inside of that 18 yard box. Bones sent it across, skips across the box. McLaughlin will come over to get it. Good. Jimmy trying to get away from Richard Dixon. Dixon touches it last. And a corner kick coming up for FC Cincinnati. Much better energy from Jimmy tonight as well. I should say today, right? I yeah. Saying, say tonight, but today. That's all right. We're quickly moving towards the evening. The evening time. Of course, St. Louis is in the Western Conference. Cincinnati in the East. Corbin Bone to send the corner. Skips across the box. Kenny Walker heads it down and is going to be called for a ticky tack foul right there on the edge of the 18 as he got his arm into the back. Yeah, it just tries to separate a little bit, a little bit of a nudge and yep. you no know, knock on. I think that might have been Wiedemann actually was coming through to hit that. Mark Pace will come forward to take a short free kick. 1.29 goals against average on the season for Pace. He does have three clean sheets and has saved 71%. Of the shots that have come his direction. Throw in coming for FC Cincinnati near sideline. Polak gets it back on the throw and then sends it across midfield. Nobody home. In 
talked to John Hans before the match. He was saying because of the heat today, he wouldn't be surprised to see hydration breaks. We haven't heard officially yet if that is part of the plan. Right. Jordan Roberts to the offensive third. Into the box. Pat McMahon to break it up. James Musa was coming in trying to strike it. That just shows you Musa kind of how dynamic he is, you know, level one two with a big target. I think it was Jordan Roberts, and they're going to have to pick him up. He's definitely a dangerous step for some of this. Musa from Plymouth, England, moved to New Zealand at the age of seven. Does have one appearance for New Zealand's national team that came against South Africa. Playing in his second year for St. Louis FC. Harrison Delbridge. Trying to keep it alive. Corbin Bone with a header. And then knocked out by Dixon. Looking for a Colby. Rapole will play it off his chest. Rapole with some space fires a shot. It'll deflect off of Lurry and out along the end line. Corner kick coming up for FC Cincinnati. Jimmy McLaughlin right now acting as though he's going to take it. Corbin Bone slowly jogging over. And it will either be a short corner at will. It's important to get a service in. We saw this earlier in the season with that song when it's at that level. It's very difficult for the goalkeeper to kind of see, you know. You would think any ball that's coming in from our side of the pitch right yeah. now would be an advantage as Mark Pace is looking directly into the sun that is setting behind us over the press box. Corbin Bone unable to pick it up. Wait a minute. Back to Kenny Walker. Walker trying to play it forward for Rapole. Contact just outside the 18 in the native of Madrid, Spain. Slow to get back to his feet. Made contact with Sam Fink, the defender from Edwardsville, Illinois. Fink is good friends with Sean Nicoli, Ross Tomaselli, and Corbin Bone because they were all teammates at Wake Forest. He just extends his arm and he catches him in the mouth there. Not sure that it was anything intentional. While well, Aaron Powell attends to Alvaro Rapol, let's check in with Lindsey Patterson. Tommy, I do have an update on that hydration break. Prior to the match, the plan was to take a break at 35, and then again in the second half at 70. But after talking to both coaches, coaches said, hey, we don't need it right now. The field has cooled off. I checked the temp. It's about 83 to 84 degrees right now. Well, and of course, Lindsay is standing on our side of the field. A little bit cooler on your side, Lindsay, than the far side. Right now, the guy's getting a chance to hydrate while Rapol gets up. He appears to be okay. It's been a physical match thus far, and it was physical back in early July when these two teams played. A handful of yellow cards in that match. FC Cincinnati won two to one, but I would imagine when you play a team early on, it's physical in the first matchup. Some of that will carry over to the second time around. Well, no, absolutely. You know, I, I think in John's, you know, preparations for today was, was making sure that FC Cincinnati were ready to compete physically and mentally. They were dialed in. They knew what they were going to come up against. And I think obviously St. Louis have got an identity. You know, they want to make it very hard for opponents. So FC Cincinnati have to be up to that, that task today. Both these clubs basically getting now maybe as fast as we reported that the hydration break was waved off. Was it reinstated? Both goalies have come over to their benches. So maybe they pulled a quick one on old Lindsey Patterson down there. <laughs> Lindsey? Yeah, you know, again, they weren't, the plan was no. They said <laughs> accident about two minutes ago. Then they all came over and uh, took a little bit of a water break. Maybe they changed their mind. It was getting a little hot on that side of the field. So water and towels being passed out over on the FC Cincinnati bench. John Harms going with the orange polo today. Much like my broadcast partner, Kevin McCloskey. That's good taste, of course. A little bit of a change of route. Usually the staff all, always goes with those charcoal black polos, yeah. but 
sometimes when you've had a tough month, he's been it's time for a change, a right? Yeah. That's right. He's been watching your tweets and <laughs> see, re-watching the broadcast, see how sharp it looks when you're on camera, and he decided to go with the orange polo today as well. 29th minute as we have had our first hydration break. Of course, the time taken off for the break will be tacked on the stoppage time at the end of the first half. I would imagine by about the 60th, 65th minute, somewhere in there, the entire pitch will be in the shade, which will make things much cooler. We were down there around 3 p.m., and it was very warm, and there was not much shade to be found. It was toasty, for sure. It was hot. I think one, one other thing just to kind of touch on here briefly about St. Louis, which I'm very impressed with, a lot of their players, if you look on the roster, are from kind of Illinois and Missouri. And St. Louis traditionally is a very, you know, strong soccer city. Um, but to have a makeup of the roster of local players like that, to me, is very impressive. They're a club that's missing a few key pieces today. We mentioned it early, but Irvin Herrera, the forward from El Salvador, is representing his national team right now. So he is not here. That is a huge loss for interim coach Tim Leonard as he has 11 goals and three assists on the season has just been phenomenal had a four goal match earlier this year against Tulsa so no doubt his presence is missed mm -hmm. then goalkeeper Ryan Thompson he is not here he actually played the last time these two clubs played he's good friends with Omar Cummings because Cummings had a great run with the Jamaican yeah. national team and Ryan Thompson right now is with the reggae boys as they are going through World Cup qualifying so he's not available for this match. After that, Chad Bond is suspended because he has five yellow cards. So a little bit of a shorter ro roster, and then Parker Marr has a groin injury, so he's not available. So Tim Leonard having to be a little bit creative, change up his 18 as well as his 11. And right now we are scoreless as we turn over to the 31st minute. Pollock knocks the header down. And Rapol trying to get to it, tangled up with Tyler David, the native of Minneapolis. Interesting and call. And Rapol <laughs> might have gotten away with one. I think he did. I think he actually caught the St. Louis player as he came in there. Wiedemann trying to bring it out wide. Lindsay mentioned it off the top as you look out here. At Nippert Stadium, hard to believe that four days ago, Thursday evening, college football was played here at Nippert Stadium, and now it's back to looking just like a soccer facility. Just that turnaround is fantastic to see that. You know, I think we're talking with Don McNally, right, director of operations. What are you saying? Maybe a two-day turnaround? They said it's about a two-day turnaround, and there's going to be a quicker one. Four days. He said it took him a lot of time. They were still touching it up yesterday, but he said it's probably about a two-day turnaround. To get it switched over from football to soccer. McLaughlin into the 18. McLaughlin into the middle. Pace swats it away up over the goal. How about that shot on a tight angle from McLaughlin? Good ball. Yeah, no, he, I thought maybe you'd taken an extra touch, maybe too many, but as soon as he, he gets past that last defender, he, he turns his hips well and gets a good shot on frame. Makes the goalkeeper see it. Great up. reaction time. Corner kick is brought to you by the Levy Law Offices. Corner is sent in to Tyler Good Pollock. Ball. Delbridge heading it over pace and out of play. Goal kick coming for St. Louis. But again, they continue to find these opportunities, push down the pitch and setting it up. I think just the variance too has been, you know, pretty cool to see. It's Tyler there is now serving an early ball. He's kind of 40 yards out. Jimmy's getting past in defenders. They're combining in the Sean's feet. So it's good. It's good to see they have different options in the attack. And they've created. Offensive opportunities on set pieces as well as against the run of play. Yeah. St. Louis trying to get to the offensive third. Plumhoff with some pressure from Pollock. Good tackle. They're going to keep possession, then Pollock pokes it away. Dixon will pick it up. And throw in for, F for St. Louis FC. I think an important thing, and I, I hit it on this earlier, I think if we can get maybe in a higher position. That'll help Sean kind of put St. Louis's back four under a little bit more pressure. And hopefully cause some uh, some chances. Ball's played all the way back to pace. 
FC Cincinnati with five matches remaining, including this one, have already locked up a playoff spot. Now trying to secure a home match, which we've talked about a few times, would certainly be an electric atmosphere. We've seen the way the city and the community has responded all season long. The club averaging about 17,000 fans per game. A huge crowd is expected for the regular season finale on September 17th. And if this club could host a home playoff match, it would be a huge lift for the Lions as they try to advance and move on and keep the season alive. Yeah, and no, I think if so far, I, I feel like they've given a good performance, you know, a lot of good, good kind of plays and good energy to, to start the game. So hopefully the fans on a good turnout again tonight are being entertained. Nick Lachlan just outside the 18 to a Coley. Heads it backwards and couldn't quite catch up with it. I think he knew Rapol was there. May have been trying to go to Alvaro. And Alvi never made the run, so it skips out along the inline. Yeah, I think the play maybe just overhead a little bit. John Hart's rewarded Alvaro Anton Rapol with a spot in the 18 last time FC Cincinnati was home. That was back on August 24th, and he started in. At Charlotte. Wiedemann loses his balance, but able to keep enough That's touch well. on, and then a Coley does a great job splitting two defenders. Outside to Rapol. Rapol swinging into the box, got a bit excited and a bit too strong over the head of Jimmy McLaughlin. And Sean does well there again, getting out of tight pressure. On any of the, the chances that he's got to kind of hold up and bring other players into play. I thought he's done well tonight. St. Louis will throw it in and it'll skip right back out along the touchline. Delbridge wastes no time bringing it over to Barry. T. Cincinnati will take some time. Knocking it to the far side. Now back over to Delbridge. Hasn't been a ton of midfield build up tonight. You know, kind of kind of from their defensive third into the attacking third, kind of bypassing that midfield. Here's Polak. Finds Wiedemann with some space. Wiedemann will leave it for a pull. Try to go right back. St. Louis wanted an offside call. Looks like Coley may have been a hair forward the flag never went up but it didn't make any difference as the run was disrupted. Good touch by Harrison Delbridge. Polak right in midfield. Boom. With a right foot for a Coley. Broken up and Moose is there to regain control. On the plum off. Lachlan will have it come off his leg. Throw in for St. Louis. Richard Dixon will come over to take it. 26 year old will fire it into the midfield. Quick throw in for Ambersley. Polak goes down, was looking for a call. In the meantime, Blumhoff picks it up. Then Delbridge comes over to knock it away from him. Tyler might have thought he got fouled on that, but looked like Plumhoff kind of used his body well and just went shoulder to shoulder to separate. Pollock laid out, waiting for the call in the meantime, had to get back up and help out defensively. Usa from the near side will throw it in. Fires it into the box, skips in front of Hildebrandt, then headed by Andrew Weed. This could be dangerous here. Nick Lockman with a ton of space. Two on three, but he has Corbin Bone yeah, trailing. Pat McMahon as well. Then McLaughlin tries to send it out wide to McMahon. Kenny Walker picks it up. Build up not over yet. A Coley fires, and Jimmy McLaughlin was there to deflect and just missed. Yeah, just a build up to you know obviously in transition Jimmy does well to kind of intercept it. Does great to penetrate into the space, and just at the last second here you'll see he just loses his balance. Good ball in from Sean, and just I think he just didn't have numbers on that side to commit to that. Jimmy McLaughlin sporting the new do with the platinum blonde hair. 
Creating a few opportunities here in the first half. 39th minute, nil nil here at Nippert Stadium. Corbin Bone will leave it out wide for McLaughlin. McLaughlin along the end line tried to send it and didn't get quite enough. Good to see Corbin Bone involved there. I talked about them kind of bypassing midfield, not a connecting with him. He does a great job of kind of turning and committing defenders all the time. Corbin Bone picked up his fourth yellow card against Charlotte, so he is now one away from serving a one match suspension if he picks up a fifth in the regular season. Obviously, that would be a huge loss for FC Cincinnati. Bone and Wiedemann, as well as goalkeeper Mitch Hildebrandt, are the only three players who have started every match this season for John Harks. Ball comes bouncing into the box and then it is scooped up by Hildebrand. As well, they're just to kind of cover that space in behind uh, Harrison Delbridge. Hildebrand hasn't really been tested here in the first half. Gave up three goals for just the second time this season. On Wednesday night at Charlotte, the only other time he gave up three goals this season was April 16th. That was against Louisville City, the first of three matchups between the two clubs this season. I think St. Louis tonight, it, you know, you've seen it kind of throw on their corner kicks, but that long throw from Moose is going to be a threat. Obviously, Mitch has got to be aware of that, and obviously the other defenders as well. Got to make sure that they pick up on the moment. Polak has it taken off his foot, but then it goes right to McLaughlin. Over to Corbin Bone. Heel taps it to a Coley. A Coley in the box tried to go far post and just missed by inches. I think Sean goes for the shot here. You know, uses his body well, turns. I don't think he's got a great angle on it. I think huh. Maybe a ball across the face of the net or across the six at least. He's got Wiedemann kind of squared that he could maybe uh, take die for a goal. Almost made it a great angle. It's tough when that goalkeeper comes out there. You know, you, you're not going to a lot of target the aim up. Sam Fink went down. Another water break here. Should give the teams another chance to hydrate after the fact. After the shot, the match official Joshua Brooks came over for a long conversation with Richard Dixon. I think Dixon was asking for an offside call on a Coley. The entire match, St. Louis has been waving their hands every time the ball is sent in the direction of Sean Coley asking for offside, and I'm not exactly sure, obviously, what. Joshua Brooks was talking to him about, but they had a long conversation after that ball rolled out. So the conversation's going on, and I think what Sam happened. Fink just laid down. Yeah, I think what happened. Actually, Sean Nicoli, before that play, Hoppin was in an offside position, which obviously allowed to be. And then as he comes back in, he turns and uses his body on the St. Louis defender who. I, I guess he's just that bad position in, maybe a little bit of a fight. What St. Louis are probably complaining about, but is Sean being in that offside position before the ball was played, which is totally legitimate. You can do that. And I think Sean's been very creative with that kind of sense tonight when to get in behind him and they kind of come in in front. That's why you've seen St. Louis defenders kind of raising their hand quite a lot. He's been a menace. Sam Fink is grabbing his chest as he heads towards the bench. See if he gets the opportunity to return as he chats with interim head coach Tim Leonard. He'll get a sip of water. It appears as though he will be okay. They have had the wind knocked out of him. Either way, bought some time for everybody to catch up on their respective benches. And now Fink will come to midfield and set to return to the match. We are in the 43rd minute. We did have a hydration break. We've had two injuries that have needed attention on the pitch. Now looking at a few minutes of stoppage time. Bone fed it to a Coley. Defensive pressure was coming from Tyler David, and Coley couldn't keep it in play. Roberts trying to win it. McMahon comes over and collects. Good defending again by Pot. Good run. Walker forward to Wiedemann. Takes a funny bounce, oh. and Wiedemann shoots it just wide. What a strike by the native of California. As it took a funny bounce, he got it to his left foot, 
And missed by inches. Just this little play here, you'll see the replay, but this ball I think was played through maybe by Jimmy McLaughlin. Great first run and then he does well to kind of turn his hips. And unlucky with the strike. Great technique of kind of wrapping his body around it. Pace was beat. And Andrew Wiedemann just misses on his seventh goal of the season. This could be dangerous here too if Sean can get it. Coley can't get to it as Lurie clears it out far touchline. Kenny Walker will hurry over to take the throw in, and now he'll leave it for Pat McMahon. Two big opportunities for FC Cincinnati in the last five minutes to strike first. Yeah, it's a fun. Austin Berry will be taken down right in the midfield. Cincinnati working right to left here in the first half. Pat McMahon will collect it along the corner of the 18. He has some room into the 18. Takes a shot at Coley with sliding. Looking to be on the receiving end of the pass from Pat McMahon. And again, FC Cincinnati that close to goal number one. Yeah, you'll see the, the shot here or the cross coming in. Sean was just unlucky. But to me, the build up before that, that's been the best possession that FC Cincinnati have had. You know, great pattern in. I think it started with a quick free kick, played in as a target, and to weed him in, laid off, went back out wide, and then crossed. So I'm sure John and Ryan will be happy with that sequence. You know, Pat McMahon missed the match at Charlotte after picking up his fifth yellow card against New York. And I would say Pat McMahon has played a great first half here this afternoon. I think him and Tyler Pollock have both have been on it. You know, they, they've been dialed in from the start. The number one job obviously is to defend. Number two is they get in the attack, and they've done both. So very impressive both of them. Fourth official signals a minimum of four minutes of stoppage time. Another great ball there from Harrison. McMahon leaving it for a pole who can't quite get there. Lurry picked it up for St. Louis, and then Austin Berry sent it out into the stands. You're starting to see FC Cincinnati. They're just starting to stretch St. Louis out in different ways now. You know, there's a lot more pockets of space being opening up, and the inside on the outside just depends on the combination of the sequence. But they're going to create a lot more. I have a feeling at least they're going to create a lot more chances in this game. Certainly has appeared they've been able to control much of the first half. The one thing obviously missing now is just the you know, end product, right? Of maybe better delivery or, or kind of just a little bit more composure in front of goal. Certainly have had opportunities here in the first half. Walker and Delbridge will bring it across midfield. Elbridge with what ends up being a shot from midfield sails in the direction of Mark Pace and that one got a little bit away from it. Pace will slow it down here. Just over a minute left in stoppage time. I think St. Louis will be happy getting in with a tie honestly. Absolutely. Just going to ask you that question. If you're St. Louis and you haven't had a lot of opportunities you've seen FC Cincinnati create Numerous chances to score. I'm going to try to kill this off if they can. Throw in for FC Cincinnati from the far touch line. The orange and blue looking for their 13th win on the season, an opportunity to bounce right back into third place in the Eastern Conference if they can get the win and three points here today. Austin Berry is fouled trying to win a header. So a free kick coming. He got tangled up there with Jordan Roberts. Childerbrand will come forward to play it. Maybe one last chance. The home lads may get yeah one more opportunity depending on how this ball is played. I'm feeling they'll probably go long on this. Just you know one more kind of roll of the dice if they can. Try to get Nick a goal in before half time. Put them in good good position. Childerbrand plays it to Polak. Kenny Walker trying to get it over to Andrew Wiedemann and the first half will come to a close. 
here at Nippert Stadium. Nil nil after 45 minutes as the clubs will head to the locker room. We will get set to check in with FC Cincinnati head coach John Hartz and she is ready. Her reports are brought to you by Volkswagen. Lindsay, take it away. Yeah, coach, you're getting the opportunities, the looks, but even that shot by Andrew Wiedemann, you put your hands on your face like you couldn't believe that shot didn't get in. Well, I mean, he's a, I love when Andrew surprises us because of his technique. He's one of the cleanest players with both feet in the league and uh, created, you know, great opportunities there. It's just you got to finish those chances. And um, so from my point of view, I think the attitude's been brilliant. Uh, I think we've played very well, good discipline throughout, uh, and the guys are up for it today. Thanks, coach. Thank you. 45 minutes of soccer in the books. 45 minutes still to come your way. When we return to Nippert Stadium, Lindsay will be joined by U.S. Senator Rob Portman. FC Cincinnati and St. Louis FC all knotted up at zeros. This is FC Cincinnati Soccer. Time Report is brought to you by the Healthcare Management Group, providing greater care for greater Cincinnati. Labor Day Monday here at Nippert Stadium, where we are at the half. Cincinnati, an American flag that has actually flown over the U.S. Capitol. What has inspired you to do so? Because of the remarkable inaugural season we've had here. I mean, FC Cincinnati has taken our town by storm. Uh, look at this crowd here tonight. We have broken all attendance records. I'm just so proud of the team, proud of the community for supporting the team. 
Also, you guys have done an awesome job in the community. We walked in and we saw all the kids out on the AstroTurf playing soccer, the outreach to youth soccer, some of the things you have done to help encourage people to get involved in the game and to you know, help people to be able to have the resources to come to this game is, is awesome. So I appreciate what FC Cincinnati has done and I can't wait to get in the playoffs. Speaking of community, you do a lot of traveling representing the state of Ohio. What do you hear about FC Cincinnati when you are traveling? Everybody's jealous of us. <laughs> people are really excited. I was actually in Columbus on Friday and I, I met uh, just by happenstance a guy who plays for the crew and he was saying, man, you guys are killing it in Cincinnati. You're doing great. So, I mean, people are seeing what we're doing here, these record attendance levels, the enthusiasm and energy that this city has, you know, embraced this team the, the way they have. So it's really, it's really noticed in the rest of the state. We do live in a divisive time. How neat is it to just see it bring everybody together? It could be here in Nippert, it could be here in the community of Cincinnati. Yeah, I mean, this is a diverse crowd here today. All different political persuasions, people from every station of life. I mean, sports does that, but I think soccer particularly does that with young people. Uh, you see a lot of millennials here and, and you know, kids here, people who are maybe not showing up at some of the other sports venues, but they're coming here and they're excited about this. A lot of these young people played soccer growing up. You know, my daughter's here with me today. I got to coach six of her indoor and outdoor seasons. And, uh, you know, soccer is hot right now. So it's a terrific time for FC Cincinnati to come here to our community. And that's why I think you see so many young people here and so much support. Well, we might put you out there, but we really appreciate your time, Mr. Portman. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Back to you guys. And we are going to go to a break. We'll be right back after this. Stretched out to the middle, back to green.
Halftime at Nippert Stadium where we are scoreless between FC Cincinnati and St. Louis FC on Labor Day. Tom Glitter and Kevin McCloskey, happy to be back with you where we are at nil-nil. But, Kevin, no question, FC Cincinnati did a fantastic job at controlling the first 45 minutes of this match. It looked very dangerous, you know, created a lot of opportunities in different ways. We talked about that. Early service, 1v1 with their wingers getting in behind. Some good combination. I think Sean O'Coley, too, has done a great job as a target. So, very threatening half. Time to check today's first half highlights. Brought to you by Road Dog Logistics, one of Cincinnati's fastest growing companies. Road Dog Logistics, working like a dog to move your freight. And you talked about Sean O'Coley. Well, all of the forwards created chance after chance and opportunities throughout the first half. Yeah, this first chance obviously set up by Tyler Pollock. The next chance set up by Pat McMahon. So two fullbacks getting into the attack is a great sign. And this is a ball in from Sean. Keeper and the defender get mixed up, and Wiedemann's just so unlucky that he doesn't get that second ball. Lost his balance there, nearly regained it, and just whiffed on it. And look who's involved again, Sean Acoli, and a ball that goes just wide. I think he's, he's done great back to goal, kind of turning and, and setting up either shots or through passes. So, yeah, Sean's been very threatening tonight. This is a great opportunity here. Ball comes over. Andre Wiedemann does a great job of reading the spin of the ball, too. A good technique to hit it past the far post. Pat again involved, kind of beats his player. And who's on the end of it? Sean O'Coley. Stats from the first half. The shots tell the story. Seven for FC Cincinnati, just one for St. Louis. The corners about even. We have yet to see a booking. 45 more minutes to come your way on a sun-splashed Labor Day here in the Queen City. We are scoreless. The second half comes your way next. This is FC Cincinnati Soccer.
Tom Glenner and Kevin McCloskey happy to be back with you at Nippert Stadium where FC Cincinnati and St. Louis FC have made their way out of their respective locker rooms for some thoughts. Let's go back down to the pitch and check in with Lindsay. Yeah, guys, I had a chance to talk to assistant head coach Ryan Martin. It was really similar to what John Harks told me going into the half. They're pretty happy with how they play. They just got to carry that momentum going into the second. They have plenty of time in this second half, but just finish some of those shots, get some better opportunities and no lineup changes. All right, of course, all of Lindsay's sideline reports are brought to you by Volkswagen. The lineup that John Harks has run out there tonight worked pretty well in the first half. Plenty of opportunities, as we just showed you in the first half highlights, just missed on that final finish a few times. Got to have a lot of confidence coming out of the locker room. Stick with the game plan. Do what you're doing, and sooner or later, a couple of those balls have got to find their way into the net. Just got to fall to the right player at the right time, really. You know, they, they've got a lot of numbers in the box. They created the opportunities. And as John said in his halftime interview, it's, it's just finishing. So we hope we see that in the second half, but so far, so good. They've looked very, very confident. The orange and blue huddling up as they will work left to right. Switch ends of the pitch here in the second half. That means Mitch Hildebrand will defend the goal right in front of the Bailey. Also means as he looks over his right shoulder, he's looking a little bit into the sun. You can see the shadows working their way across the pitch. About half of the field is now in the shade. By the end, it'll certainly all be in the shade. And then folks on the far side will certainly appreciate that a little bit as they've been baking in the sun. The fans sitting on the west side where it is pretty packed, much more grateful for their seat location today as they are not in the sun on a warm day here at Nippert Stadium. We do have one substitution coming for Tim Leonard. That's brought to you by the Levy Law Offices. And Jacob Bushu, a midfielder out of Champaign, Illinois, makes his 22nd appearance of the season. So Bushu in to start the second half for Tim Leonard, an interim coach leading St. Louis in his fourth match. FC Cincinnati will control to start the final 45 minutes. And Andrew Wiedemann will put it into play. Mentioned earlier that this is the only Western Conference team that FC Cincinnati plays. Last season, St. Louis was in the Eastern Conference, moved to the Western Conference with the expansion clubs that have joined the USL this season. But this rivalry set up being so close having two great soccer communities Kevin talked about St. Louis and what a great job they do at developing youth players yeah. and trying to set up a bit of a rivalry even if they are in opposite conferences. Obviously the travel wasn't too bad about a six hour drive. I mentioned all the expansion teams this year in the USL FC Cincinnati right now the only expansion side that has locked up a playoff side in either the Eastern or Western Conference. Certainly an impressive job thus far by John Harks and his troops, but they are looking for much more, and that includes at least one home playoff match here at Nippert Stadium. Jordan Roberts looking to cross it, has it deflected away, and an early corner coming for St. Louis, who had some chances, you could say. Not no really strong offensive opportunities, but they had chances in the offensive third in the first 10 minutes of the match. Really just from set pieces, you know, uh, yeah. from corner kicks or long throws. Um, I can't really remember any kind of build-up play or, or opportunity that was created by uh, their attack in open play. So, you know, FC Cincinnati have to stay switched on for this, take care of their bigger targets. Mitch Lurie will take the corner. It's brought to you by the Levy Law Offices. Sent in and shot by Jordan Roberts. Goes just wide to the right of Mitch Hildebrandt. No real danger there in the goal kick. For Hildebrandt, the six foot one goalkeeper out of Livonia, Michigan. Spent the last four years with Minnesota United, who of course had a big announcement two weeks ago, as they will be joining Major League Soccer. So great things going on in the Twin Cities yeah. as far as soccer is concerned. Mitch never really got a great look there. He certainly has gotten a great look here in the Queen City. Barry back to Hildebrandt and then Kenny Walker coming in. And he'll begin the build up. Bone in the midfield with some space. Sends it to his left, Tyler Pollock. 
Pollock to a Coley tried to sneak it in to Jimmy McLaughlin couldn't quite get there. This looks so much more fluid in their attack you know the movement off the balls seems natural the timing's done. Pace out into the midfield. Delbridge wins the header. McLaughlin thought he was offside was trying to get back without touching it. As he let up on that ball. Duty to Plumhoff. And Plumhoff and Rapole get tied up. Alvaro will be called for the foul. Just enough there. Yeah, I think he just maybe chops him with his foot as he comes across him. Get into the game through the USL social media channels. Follow the USL on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for news, live game updates, and video highlights from across the league. Of course, the regular season comes to the to an end the weekend of September 24th, and then the playoffs will begin the following weekend. So lots at stake in the USL over the next three weeks. Certainly should be fun to watch as FC Cincinnati tries to track down and secure that first round home match. Rapole trying to win it back. And he has fouled hard right in front of FC Cincinnati's bench. Joshua Brooks comes over to calm things down and have a chat with James Musa. Yeah. And that could have been a bookie. Could have been a bookie, yeah. Musa wasn't playing the ball, that's certainly fair to say. Uh, as soon as he falls on the ground, he's not supposed to play the ball, but I think that's even a step further. <laughs> Have not yet seen a card from Joshua Brooks today. Musa survives, just a foul call. Coley picks it up off the corner. Corbin Bone outside the 18 on to Kenny Walker. Good ball. Walker chips it forward. Nick Laughlin couldn't get it. Then Walker follows and shoots it just wide. Jimmy McLaughlin slow to get up. Appears to be okay, but boy, did he get a great look at it. No, I think he gets caught offside, obviously, from this restart. Flag was up on the near side. You're right. Kenny does a great little job of just kind of flicking over the top, and timing's just off from Jimmy's run. So. Just unlucky and then obviously Kenny's follow up shot. So the second effort would not have mattered. Pat McMahon will handle the throw in midfield for FC Cincinnati. Barry forward trying to feed it to Sean Coley and it skips over his head. Just unlucky there. Corbin does well, kind of coming back and receiving on his back foot and trying to find Sean in an isolated area where he's kind of back to goal but in a 1v1 position. Barry with the header. Oh, I'm going to go back to McMahon and now to Hildebrand. Mitch out into the midfield. Clear foul as a Coley was battling for position with Tyler David. David gives him a shove. David getting the start here tonight. Played just seven minutes in the battle back on July 9th. It's a little bit of a push, I think, yeah. As I said moments ago, we haven't seen anything wildly aggressive tonight. Certainly plenty of physicality in this match. I think the game started actually more frantically, you know, and settled towards the half. Here's Wiedemann into the 18, sending it across the middle. Sam Fink interrupts and clears. Throw in. It's certainly being clean, but you know, I mean, nothing too dirty. Corbin Bone for McLaughlin. Yeah. Handball or foul? It doesn't really matter. I guess it's going to be a free kick from the same. Spot either way. I think on that, Jimmy's kind of looking to go back across. I think he uses his hand really to you see right here. Yeah. Just to kind of cut inside of him. So. Jacob Bushu, who just checked in, yeah. coming out of the locker room at halftime, called for the hang ball. Joshua Brooks is right there looking at it, had a great angle to see it. 
Here comes the free kick. Rapol trying to get his head onto it. Cannot. Harrison Delbridge knocks it down and Pace comes forward to collect. Another good look on a set piece, but we remain nil-nil now in the 53rd minute. FC Cincinnati comes into this match with a playoff spot secured, but currently sixth place in the East. That means they would go on the road, but a win and three points today would bump them right back to third place, and suddenly they're hosting again. Right. And just looking, you know, kind of the second half as well, I, I think the, the ship's been good. You know, they're, they're still creating chances. The only thing that Joe might be thinking about kind of changing as it, it goes on is personnel. You know, maybe a guy that's maybe a little bit quicker in a certain situation or area, but not much you can really change with the ship so far. Ball headed down to Mitch Hitterbrand on the throw and the big throw in from James Musa. You talked about in the first half certainly can be a weapon for St. Louis. Yeah. He seems to be involved in everything. You know, as I said, it's not that common for a center midfielder to be taking a throw in, but the possession, the set pieces, I mean, he, he seems to be the guy for that. When Coach Harks decides to go to his bench, he has a few good options. Eric Stevenson, who has three goals on the season. Of course, Paul Nicholson, who has 19 appearances, has played over 1,300 minutes, has a good number of starts to his name this season filled in when Austin Barry was hurt. He's available. Ross Tomaselli who has 17 appearances. So no shortage of opportunities. Luke Spencer is back into the 18. The big target and native of Cincinnati. Corbin Bone. Looking for Sean Acoli, a great ball as he delivers it inside the 18. Acoli regains his balance. Acoli along the end line, crosses it, headed directly into the air. Dixon to break it up. Pollock to bring it down. And you talked about that bench, you know, obviously different options, but it's a tough decision making any type of change because I've not seen a lot of weak players out there tonight. No, everybody's played well in the 11. Seen the fullbacks. We talked about it during the halftime highlights, pushing up, creating opportunities. Austin Barry's been involved. He is right now. Kenny Walker's had good touches. St. Louis will get the throw in. And I think the only thing that, that he's looking for, really, if it you know continues to say 0 0, is somebody with uh, another scoring threat. You know, they're certainly getting the chances, and they're certainly getting the build up play from midfield. Certainly important. For FC Cincinnati, when you look at the remaining schedule, three of the last four in the regular season will be on the road. So when you look at the two home matches, today against St. Louis, team with seven wins on the season, and then September 17th against Orlando City B, a team that is in eighth place currently in the Eastern Conference, you have to feel like those two home matches, you got to get six points and then see what you can do with the three on the road. Got to take advantage of it. And the three on the road come against clubs that are currently not in the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference. Tackle in midfield, clean by Tyler Pollock. Yeah, they, they say, I mean, if you can get three at home and one away, I mean, that's job done, but. Blumhoff does a good job getting past Pat McMahon. Then McMahon coming back can't win it. Kenny Walker bringing assistance. And Plumoff touches it last throw in FC Cincinnati. Good job there defensively. Long ball for Jimmy McLaughlin. Didn't get there. But he picks up the deflection. The only thing that I'm really starting to notice, you know, you'll see Corbin drop kind of deep quite a lot to get the ball. And really at that point, that should be Kenny Walker's job, you know, as a six of, of a defensive center midfielder. I think Corbin kind of be a little bit more effective up supporting Wiedemann in a higher position, allowing Kenny to do that. But at times, I think High St. Louis have defended Kenny. They've denied him penetration in. So then forces Corbin to get back in. Plumhoff will make the run up the near touchline. McMahon trailing. McMahon defending and taking it off his foot. Plumhoff right back at it. See, and just again, there's two center mids in the same position, which is fine. They're in transition. But Raven right now, We've got to get a higher player in the support, maybe Sean or Wiedemann, and create that numbers numbers up situation in the attack. 
Nobody there, and I think Sean Acoli is going to get booked. First yellow card of the match, and the fans here at Nipper not happy about it. Might have caught him with his boot and the spikes. It was Jordan Roberts who went down. Acoli gets the yellow card in the 58th minute. Let's see. Just Catches on it, yeah. I think the referee's right there in a good position, too. So Sean Acoli gets the yellow card. Remember, he already set out one for yellow card accumulation yeah. when he picked up five. He then picked one up against New York Red Bulls, too. That was questionable at best on what looked like a clean tackle in the box last Sunday. That is his sixth. Tack on one more today, his seven. And now he is one away from, from having to sit again. I think that that was that was a yellow card. I think the game against New York wasn't a yellow was card. Not. I would agree. He caught Jordan Roberts with his spikes and booked here. Either way, it will be his seventh. So yeah. if he gets one more, he will sit one more. And with Omar Cummings hurt, that would be a major concern for for John Harms. Well, even now he's got to be a little bit careful. You know, he's yeah, kind he's of playing a, on a yellow now. You're he's right. He's a physical kind of uh, style player, so I mean, you'll see this too. You'll see center center backs now are going to kind of push him a little bit and test Ab him. And they already do in the first place. They he gets a lot one. of contact. He's just got to be careful how he reacts. Absolutely. Tyler Pollock into the box. Jimmy McLaughlin. McLaughlin into the middle, and Andrew Weedham in a step too late. His pace wraps it up. Another opportunity for FC Cincinnati, but we are in the 60th minute, nil-nil at Nippert Stadium. Second meeting this year between the two clubs. I mentioned Omar Cummings out for several weeks. He played a huge role when these two teams played back on July 9th. Had a goal and an assist in that match. Eric Stevenson had the game-winning goal in the 78th minute on the pass from Cummings. Here's McLaughlin just outside the 18. Fires it with his right foot, turned away by Dixon. Bone picks it up and shoots high. Tim Leonard is going to go to the bench for the second time tonight. As Seth Rudolph will check in. The substitution is brought to you by the Levy Law Offices, where they turn your crash into cash. Contact them online at levylawoffices.com. Bloomhoff will take a seat. Seth Rudolph will come in. Three substitutions remaining for Tim Leonard should he decide he needs them. Roberts, nice ball forward. Now Roberts will send it into the middle. Flex off Bushu. Rapol. Try to tap it to himself around the defender, Jordan Roberts. Didn't quite get there. Check it, it was Patrick Duty defensively. I think an important key now for FC Cincinnati, the situation that they're in, you know, we're at the 61st minute. They've been knocking at the door. So far, they've not created a chance or scored a chance. They've got to stay patient. You know, they can't let frustration come into this. They've got to keep doing what they're doing, but stay professional kind of in their approach when things don't go their way. We've seen matches like this a few times this season where they've come up on empty on many opportunities, but in the end, most of the time they've found a way to get one in there. Yeah. And I would imagine that could be the case as they've been knocking all day long. Yeah. Let's see, Cincinnati Soccer is brought to you in part by Titec Medical, compact pre hospital medical supplies for trauma care. For more information, visit titecmedical.com. And here comes a yellow card on St. Louis. We talked about how a Coley is always a target, maybe more so when he's playing on a yellow. And the first booking of the day goes to Mitch Lurie. Yeah, exactly. Mitch Lurie, <laughs> again, he's taking his first opportunity, his first chance to really kind of let Sean know, Sean know that he's there and, and try to get a reaction from him. And so, I the first five. booking of the day for St. Louis, of course, Sean was booked just five minutes ago. Mitch Lurie picks up his second yellow card of the year. He was selected in the 2016 MLS draft by Philadelphia, but did not sign with the union. 
Winstead signed on March 16th with St. Louis FC. Austin Berry trying to receive the header. Chasing it down towards the corner. Seth Rudolph came over and deflected it out. So a throw in for Tyler Polak. Coley right now standing in the box surrounded by five white jerseys. Wiedemann. For Walker and now back to Delbridge in the midfield and FC Cincinnati will restart their buildup. Barry chipping it forward for a pull cleared away by Lurie. Delbridge across for Polak. Wiedemann was trying to leave it for Polak and then Richard Dixon intervened and was fouled. I mean, the only other thing that John's kind of look at here and kind of try to assess is fitness levels, you know. We talked about the patients and everything else and, and how FC Cincinnati have been knocking at the door, but that, that takes a lot of exerted energy too. You know, he's going to look and see the how effective are his fullbacks in the sit, sit, or 75th minute, 80th minute. Same thing with his wingers. Those guys have a lot of ground to cover outside on the wings as well. St. Louis pushing into the offensive third and the ball is sent right into the chest of Hildebrand. Childerbrandt coming into this match who played 2,171 minutes. Missed just 79 this season, and that's the game in which he got the red card. That was not. Dallas J, for what it's worth, came in and I thought played really well, made four saves, gave up two penalty kicks, and that was it. In a tough situation to come off the bench, bench in the 11th minute. You kind of see here, I don't know if you've noticed, but Rapal's kind of went over onto that left side, kind of leaving. Nobody on the right side at all. They're trying to outnumber. Maybe Jones looked at the right back for St. Louis, or St. Louis and said, well, let's try to go after him. Let's try to exploit it, expose it if we can. So interesting kind of starting position there from Rapal. Corbin Bone coming over to win the ball off the foot of Bushu. Delbridge. Out wide to Polak. McLaughlin with some room into the offensive third. Taken down just outside the 18. And Jimmy McLaughlin cannot believe that a whistle did not come from Joshua Brooks. Kenny Walker in the meantime in a heap of pain at midfield. Way away from the play so didn't see what happened to Kenny Walker. Let's take a look at the tackle. Yeah, it looks like obstruction to me. Richard Dixon got in the way of his run. Yeah. Beat him for speed and just kind of got his body across to me. Meanwhile, Kenny Walker is down sitting on the pitch. Then Cicerelli will check in. Mike Ambersley will take a seat. Cicerelli, a midfielder, six foot two, out of Peoria, Illinois. The substitution is brought to you by the Levy Law Offices, where they turn your crash into cash. Walker is up and walking towards midfield. Both teams using this opportunity to hydrate on their respective benches. We did have a hydration break. A surprise hydration break in the first half. I think it's necessary in this heat, you know, especially this time of the day. 80% uh, of the pitch now in the shadows of the massive $87 million press box that we are high fit atop. Bot, fit bot for uh, Tyler Pollock in that level area of the sun. Right. Tough time to be the, the left back. Yeah. <laughs> Or the right back, if you're Richard Dixon. Yeah. Playing up that way for St. Louis. You're in the sun. Probably for another 15 minutes. In the first half, he's in the sun the whole time, so. 
Mark Bass, the six foot four goalkeeper. Right now, working on his fourth clean sheet of the season as we are tied at nil nil in the 68th minute. Nice ball sent up the touchline. And it's like Stevenson maybe coming in here. We will have a substitution for John Harks, but the ball's going to come all the way back out to midfield as it rolled out right as it was, it was passed across midfield. So Stevenson is out to midfield, has turned in his card. Certainly could be the spark that John Harks is looking for offensively. Three goals this season, one of them a game winner against St. Louis in the 78th minute on July 9th. Meanwhile, Rapol is taken down hard, grabbing his ankle. Corbin Bone forward for a Coley. Rapol still down. Wiedemann into the box. Corbin Bone coming over. Mark Pace will wrap it up. And Rapol. Looking in the direction of the match official, asking why there wasn't a call. I think with this change, maybe Rapol might yeah, be the guy coming out. That's why I was out. thinking yeah. that he might be the guy coming out either way. I think with much fitness too, he's not played that many games right. where he's probably played, you know, past 68 minutes. He's only played a total of 73 minutes in two matches this season, so he's getting 70 here today. Yeah. St. Louis turning towards the offensive third. Kenny Walker coming forward to take it off the foot of Seth Rudolph. Tyler Pollock in the sun on the far side. We'll push it forward to Kenny Walker. Also, we'll see another substitution for Tim Leonard whenever we get to that opportunity. Barry in the midfield. Swings it across for McLaughlin off his chest. Jimmy working just outside the 18. Puts it onto his right foot. Wiedemann heads it down to Coley. Didn't get to it, and it was well defended. Sam Fink came back to send it out of play. And that Same was thing. nearly it. Kenny Walker kind of plays this ball over to Jimmy with great service. Jimmy finds Wiedemann at the back post. And Sean, I think if he can gamble and get ahead of that, you know, that defender kind of get body position, then could be a goal. We saw that in the first half, too, where Kenny's finding Jimmy in space, you know, off of a kind of a 50 or 60 yard driven ball. Tyler Pollock will take the corner. It's brought to you by the Levy Law Offices. Here comes the substitution. Kenny Walker out. And Eric Stevenson in. Stevenson was excited to be back in New York Red Bull Arena. Of course, he played for Red Bulls on the MLS side. Was excited to be back there and only played 10 minutes of that match last Sunday because he was the player that was subbed out when Mitch Hildebrandt received his red card. Somebody therefore had to come out to get Dallas J in. Tyler Pollock will send it with his left foot across the box. And Coley gets his head on it and it skips just wide. Sean does well, honestly, coming in this, this ball. He probably sees this pretty late, too. Kind of jumps up and just wide. Ooh, Unlucky. He's going for that upper 90. Far post. Wasn't quite as close as it looked in real time, but yet another great opportunity. It's another substitution, meanwhile, for St. Louis. Tyler David will come out. He was brought to you by the Levy Law Offices and Kentaro Takata, the midfielder out of Japan. So he'll check in. Kind of interesting player plays both indoor and outdoor in St. Louis. I think with FC Cincinnati's change, you know, Stevenson coming in, I, I hinted on it earlier where Kenny Walker and Corbin Bone were both kind of defensive center midfielders. This now gives Corbin Bone a chance to be that kind of lone number six player. Then Eric Stevenson will be in a higher position. So it kind of changes the shape of the midfield triangle a little bit. Foul was called on Jordan Roberts. Seen one booking on each side. Sean Acoli for FC Cincinnati. Mitch Lurie for St. Louis. 73rd minute. And we are scoreless in the second meeting this season between these two clubs. Corbin Bone battling. Can't pick it up. Sean Acoli will steal it. Jimmy McLaughlin with a right foot and he sails it just high. St. Louis misplayed the ball. McCauley. Recovered it just outside the 18 and McLaughlin couldn't finish. 
I think Sean does great kind of sniffing out that. To me, I think Jimmy just rushes that. You know, we talked about patience. I think he just snaps at it. Probably had another half second to, to kind of get composed. Maybe he had a little more space than he thought. He had a lot more space than he thought and kind of turned his hips more. Nike is a proud partner of the USL. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all of the latest Nike soccer information. Goal kick from Pace is picked up by FC Cincinnati. And it's Mick Lachlan who just missed. Playing it in the midfield. Over to Austin Berry. And Eric Stevenson who just checked in for John Harks. Bone in the midfield. Good touch. Nick Lachlan just outside the 18. Well defended. Rapol recovers. Alvaro Anton Rapol takes a shot in the box. Deflected. And turned away by St. Louis. Good defensive play there. Orban Bone picked it back up as FC Cincinnati has just been relentless bringing the pressure. Meanwhile, Takata making the run across midfield. Austin Berry picks it up off the foot of Cicerelli. Good time tackler from Austin Berry. Duty. Forward onto the foot of Roberts. Cicerelli loses it in the midfield to Eric Stevenson. 15 minutes in regulation plus stoppage time remaining here in the Queen City. Corbin Bone trying to feed it to Wiedemann didn't get there. Pollock to Stevenson. Now to Bone into the box. Coley couldn't receive it. McMahon was able to pick it back up for FC Cincinnati and then St. Louis recovers. Seems like we're just waiting on that one right? split decision, right? Seems like it's a matter of time if it's going to be from a set piece or an open play, but I mean, FC Cincinnati are certainly finding it to lose. Bone will bring it in the midfield over to Austin Berry. Barry forward to his target to Coley. Out wide, Rapol. Alvaro Rapol is taken down hard just outside the 18. And here comes our third yellow card of the afternoon. Jordan Roberts has been in on a few tough tackles <laughs> and gets booked in the 76th minute. Yeah, Rapol does well. Well, that, that touch is especially kind of commits a defender, and for Roberts, he just kind of extends and definitely catches it. Third yellow card on the season for Roberts. See, Cincinnati had a goal earlier this season from almost this exact spot. Tyler Pollock was the one who sent it into the box. Corbin Bone is there with him. It appears that it'll be Pollock. It is. Pollock to a Coley who got his head on it, but put it straight up into the air instead of down and into the net. Great ball, great delivery in. Sean's just a little bit kind of overextended. Maybe hit. Tyler maybe played it over a little bit, but get two targets there with, with Harrison Delbridge coming at the back post as well. Coley's been amongst the USL League leading scorers all season. Currently sits in fourth with 11 goals, excuse me, 12 goals. Um, the season, of course, had a great career at Wake Forest. Signed with the Seattle Sounders, was traded to the New York Revolution, where he made five appearances last year before signing with FC Cincinnati right before they went down to IMG Academy for the preseason trip. Now in the 78th minute of the scoreless match, James Musa to his right to Kata. Now out wide. Sent across. Pat McMahon gonna head it to his goalkeeper, Mitch Hildebrandt. Good communication there. Great communication and, and great play from Pat McMahon. 
heading back to the goalkeeper is not always easy, especially under pressure. Hildebrandt was on the move and did a great job of collecting it. He knew it was a great ball, immediately was there to slap a high five to McMahon. Stevenson to Rapol. Back to Stevenson, over to Wiedemann. Wiedemann looking for a Coley and a nice job by Sam Fink there to screen out his fellow Demon Deacon. I think a Wiedemann can find Sean's feet instead over the top there. That's the, they're in. You know, he can find him as a target and get it back. Pace out into the midfield. Delbridge heads it down. Takata picks it up for St. Louis. To the right, Dixon. Now back to Mitch Lurie. Austin Berry into the midfield, Stevenson. Bone will come out wide to Polak. Now to Austin Berry. Back to Stevenson. Corbin Bone. Wiedemann with a right foot. Wiedemann shoots it just wide. Pace had a dive to his right. He'll get a goal kick because he didn't have to touch it. But Wiedemann with a good look. It's good patient build up too. You know, he, he then finds that he's got a pocket of space that he can turn. And good shot from distance on the half turn. Keep up to date with the USL all season long by visiting USLsoccer.com for everything you need to know about the USL and I'm sure a lot of fans of FC Cincinnati have been hitting refresh on the standings page quite a bit recently <laughs> keeping track of everything going on and where their club might land. Yeah. McLaughlin going to push it out wide for Wiedemann. Wiedemann with a ton of space to work He's trying to bring it into the 18. Dixon there to stand him up a great piece of defensive footwork by Rich Dixon. It's just tough for Wiedemann. He looks up and he's only got one player in the box. You know, we talked about the first half where we had six or seven guys getting in there. So I think, you know, fitness is going to obviously come into this stage of the game. It's the 80th minute. We've got 10 minutes left. And this is where John Harps is going to make another substitution. Luke Spencer will check in and Jimmy McLaughlin after 81 solid minutes will take a seat. Substitutions brought to you by the Levy Law Offices. Spencer, of course, a Cincinnati native, a product of Xavier University, making his 11th appearance of the season. I'll tell you what, St. Louis has done a good job battling and holding the fort. They have. They have. Here today, knowing they don't have their leading scorer, Irvin Herrera, who's representing his national team. Knowing they don't have one of their goalkeepers in Ryan Thompson, although Mark Pace has played quite a bit recently. Here's Luke Spencer. Great touch to Stevenson. Stevenson just outside the 18 and played it a bit too strong. I was just going to say, you know, as you were kind of complimenting St. Louis, they've always made that kind of last ditch tackle and effort and, and kind of denied it. FC Cincinnati so far in the game. Jordan Roberts will take a shot that'll go wide of Mitch Hilderbrand. He's had a fairly quiet afternoon thus far. 82nd minute scoreless between Cincinnati and St. Louis. But just with that change, they, so they, they changed their formation now into a 4 4 2. You'll see this. Uh, Rapol's gone off over to the left hand side. Wiedemann's off over, over here on the right hand side. And then you got Luke Spencer and Sean O'Coley. Austin Berry with a ton of space as he brings it across midfield. He'll leave it for Bone. The orange and blue looking for some late match heroics here at home. Three major points on the line for the home club. McMahon to Akoli. Akoli in the box. Obstructed and didn't get to the ball. Yeah. And St. Louis able to clear. Cincinnati will have to restart their buildup. Bono swinging out wide looking for a pole. Didn't quite get there. Seth Rudolph trying to take it the other way. Rapol to Polak. 
Dixon with another good defensive play. Couldn't quite get up in time to save it before it rolled out along the touch line. And Pollock will waste no time throwing it back in. Here's Stevenson. Bailey making a ton of noise, hoping for something to celebrate. Barry trying to push it out wide for Stevenson, who started his run too late. St. Louis will throw it in. Pat McMahon will win a header. And the ball comes down to Rapole, who can't control it. Back across midfield to Delbridge. Seen three yellow cards so far here in the second half, as well as an injury. So probably right now looking at two to three minutes of stoppage time. Weed him into Stevenson. Stevenson nearly Lucky. found Luke Spencer. It's broken up. Then Stevenson loses his balance, regains control, and pushes it back to Polak. Bone onto a Coley. Out wide, Rapol. What can the youngster from Spain do with it? Sends it across. Weed him in a header go. and a goal. Andrew Weedman gives the orange and blue a light lead. His eighth of the season. You could feel it coming. The entire match and FC Cincinnati with a late strike to take the lead. Good set touch there from Rapal. Finds Wiedemann at the back post. Good header and Sean just takes that decisive touch and scores. I think even just the you know the presence of, of Luke and Sean now with a change of shape, you can see here kind of Hurts the, the starting positions of the two center backs. Wiedemann's coming in from the left hand side there, so good change from John. So FC Cincinnati takes the lead. The smoke has been set off in the Bailey. And now they must hold the fort for the final five plus minutes. Wiedemann from Rapol. Rapol's second assist in as many matches. John Hart's told us he has looked good in training. That's why he worked his way into the 18. That's how he worked his way into the starting 11. And it has paid off. Rapol feeds Wiedemann, and the header gives FC Cincinnati the 1 0 advantage. Now you'll see St. Louis really push forward, something they haven't done much of this match. Right. All knocked away. Here comes a late shot. And St. Louis answers right back. The shot from the top of the 18. And just like that, we have a tie match as Hildebrand is beat. Right. We, we talked about it, you know, the biggest threat, obviously, with this long throw, Mitch comes out. And really, there should be somebody challenging at the top of the box to make sure that St. Louis player doesn't have so much time and space to, to kind of. Patrick Duty with the goal. Strike that back in. So late game heroics for Andrew Wiedemann and then late game woes for the orange and blue as Patrick Duty gets the goal, his second on the year. And right now a tough one for FC Cincinnati, but we still have some time left. Those moments immediately following goals Most for the opponents have been a concern for FC Cincinnati all season long. Well, that's, I mean, that's the game itself. That they say you're more susceptible to a goal just after you've scored, you know. And a lack of focus and concentration. And we've seen it a couple of times, obviously, this season with FC Cincinnati, so. Sean is gonna pick up a ball at midfield. And FC Cincinnati strike again. They've had plenty of opportunities tonight. Acoli was trying to give it to Wiedemann, didn't get enough of it. St. Louis is going to look for numbers the other way. It's Duty who just tied it up. Back to Takata. 
He's offside. Kind Hosmer. of plays it forward. Offside flag does not go up. Set Rudolph. However, didn't collect it, and Tyler Pollock came over to break it up. Sure looked from here as though from, he was clearly offside. offside. 88th minute, we are tied at one apiece. Jordan Roberts in the 18, fires and Mitch Hildebrandt makes a save. First time tonight, Mitch says no, but huh? he steps up. And I see Cincinnati, they can't fall asleep here in transition, and I know they want to get that extra you know, goal to get the three points, but at the same time, they've, they've got to make sure that they deal with St. Louis's counterattack. He rode the emotional roller coaster on Wednesday at Charlotte. When it looked like they had come from behind to secure a draw, up a man for the final 10 minutes, and then give up a game winning goal to Charlotte and end up leaving the other Queen City yeah. with no points as opposed to one or possibly getting a late goal. Right now, maybe three or four minutes left. Got to be able to protect that lead, you know? Tyler Pollock making a run and he is fouled about three yards outside the 18. That one's going to be marked by Joshua Brooks about five yards, but still a great spot and a big late opportunity coming for the orange and blue. Yeah, I think he probably gets fouled every two or three times, honestly. Seth Rudolph got him. Dangerous position here, probably about 21, 22 yards out. Derek Luke has come to midfield to check in. See if they wait until after the free kick. Coley standing there with Corbin Bone, Wiedemann. Saw Wiedemann score from a similar spot a few weeks ago at Richmond. He's got to get this on frame, really. Make the keeper save it. We'll have a second chance get to follow up. Ready for up. a rebound, yeah, yep. absolutely. Tyler Pollock and Andrew Wiedemann are there. Pollock acting as though it's his shot. With pole batting, battling for position. He'll step over it. Wiedemann takes it, headed away. The line got it. Bounces into the air. Second chance for Wiedemann. Maybe he holds on to it. Back to Stevenson. Now to Bone. Pressure coming from St. Louis quickly. Yeah, I can't get caught on the counter like I talked about. Stevenson. Got to fix their shape here. Kind of preventative shape so they don't get countered. When you had Barry and Delbridge forward on the set piece, and neither of your center backs have gotten back yet. No, they're still forward. Luke Spencer trying to pick it up inside the 18. Cannot think will clear it over to Dixon. We are in stoppage time. Three minutes of stoppage time. Two goals in the last five minutes. Wiedemann in the 85th, had duty in the 87th. We are tied at one apiece. Derek Luke will check in for Pat McMahon, who for all of my thoughts, played a fantastic match today. So. I thought he was fantastic. I agree. I think him and Tyler Pollock both were outstanding. And substitution brought to you by the Levy Law Offices. Pace will send it across midfield. Wiedemann trying to get it forward. Cannot. Rudolph will pick it up and send it wide for Dixon. St. Louis hoping for one more scoring opportunity. Shot from out wide. Will sail over the goal. James Musa got his foot on it. And Childerbrandt looking to resume play quickly. About two minutes remaining in stoppage time. John Hart's waving Mitch Childerbrandt and everybody to get forward. FC Cincinnati have one more in them on an afternoon where they created so many scoring chances. Only finished one of them and had the letdown two minutes later to tie it up. Austin Berry touches it forward for Stevenson. Here comes here. Wiedemann. Wiedemann pushing towards the 18. Leaves it for Stevenson. Stevenson on to Luke Spencer. Spencer in the box. Spencer corner. turning a shot. It'll deflect off of St. Louis and a corner kick coming for FC Cincinnati. Nice job there by Luke Spencer to stay with it despite a double team. FC Cincinnati may only have one or two more chances with time here, so we're plus three. Two thirds of the way through that stoppage time. Tyler Pollock will take the corner kick. It's brought to you by the Levy Law Offices. 
Delbridge and Barry playing forward. Corner kick coming. Alvaro gets his head onto it. It is knocked Call down and a penalty kick coming. A handball in the box. Here we go. Can FC Cincinnati win it in the winning moments? The handball called on the deflection in the box. Alvaro Anton Rapol, after taking the shot, was there pointing at it. It's and it hard caught the cycle. arm of James Musa. Both Rapol and Acoli saw it. Sean Acoli will square up and look for his 13th on the year. Mark Pace, the six foot four goalkeeper, will stand on the line. Sean Acoli, the six foot one forward from the state of Washington, will spot it up. Here we go. Three huge points on the line for FC Cincinnati. Acoli on the PK. Drills it, and FC Cincinnati's on the cusp of a huge home victory. The Bailey roars, and FC Cincinnati back on top. Well, we talked about it all night long with composure. He's got three points on his back. He's got the whole city on his back. Steps up, good penalty. And chance of FCC echo throughout Nippert Stadium. A late handball called in the box. And now St. Louis can't have much but a few seconds remaining. Delbridge clearing it out into the midfield. Got to go long, play the corners, really. Luke Spencer picking it up in midfield. He is taken down. Joshua Brooks looking towards his watch. And there wow. it is. They are dancing in the Bailey at Nippert Stadium. Three points for the home club. NFC Cincinnati back into third place. I think from all the all the all of the events of kind of the last two weeks, it's fit and fashion that FC Cincinnati get that that opportunity with the penalty in the last minute. And Sean does a fantastic job of finishing it off. So Sean Acoli with his 13th goal on the season wins the game for FC Cincinnati. Tonight's post-match interview is brought to you by Audi Cincinnati East, proud sponsor of FC Cincinnati and home of the ultimate Audi experience on Beachmont and at the AudiCincinnatiEast.com. Let's toss it down to Lindsay Patterson, who is losing her interviews, but she'll get them back. John Harks and Sean Acoli are both down there with big smiles on their face. Three points for the lads. They're having a little fun down here. I can't think of a better way to end it and a better guy to shoot that. No, absolutely. He's been um, ice in his veins all year. And um, to be fair, the attitude today to never say die, the way you go after a game, it's about the digging down a little bit deeper. They made it extremely hard on us. They were very organized tactically. It was a great game overall. I just can't believe this guy keeps giving me more gray hairs because I don't have the blonde like he does. But I'm happy that he had uh, the confidence to finish it off. Well done. Sean, I know after the match, the last loss, you said nobody's more disappointed than we are. We are going to bounce back Monday. You did just that. What was going through your head right there on that goal? Uh, I mean, we've been working hard all week, all month, all summer, and some of the results haven't gone our way. So we knew today we really wanted to come out and get this win. So I just had to step up for my teammates. You know, they're doing a good job getting the ball in dangerous spots, and it's my job to finish it. So glad we walked out with three points. Go celebrate with your team. Congratulations. All night long, down on the pitch, the fans are celebrating right now a two to one win. Tonight's moment of the match is brought to you by Cincy Brew Bus, Cincinnati's original and premier craft brewery, winery, and distillery tours. And I think it's pretty easy. It's the late penalty kick in stoppage time from Sean Acoli to win the match. Not 
I talked about it, just composure and, and have the, the guts and the courage and the confidence to finish that at that time, you know, coming off of two road losses and conceding a goal, you know, right after you scored it. I mean, a, a, a huge kind of credit to uh, Sean keeping his composure. A big hug between the gaffer and the leading score. FC Cincinnati picks up three in an exciting fashion. We'll wrap it up when we return the final two to one in favor of the orange and blue. This is FC Cincinnati Soccer. Lots of smiles here at Nippert Stadium as FC Cincinnati walks off the pitch with a 2-1 victory in absolutely thrilling fashion. They move into third place with the win, and what does that mean? Well, they're back to hosting a playoff match. 13-6-7 with four remaining, and you can see a game at hand in Louisville City, who is in second place. Tonight's post-match highlights are brought to you by Toyota. For all Toyota offers, including those not seen on TV, go to Toyota's official website for deals at buyatoyota.com. And lots of opportunities early for FC Cincinnati as the lads really dominated this match. Now, from kind of start to finish, there was a lot of action. You know, they, they did a, I, I thought they did a fantastic job of kind of opening up St. Louis's defense and, and creating scoring chances. And to be fair, they, they stayed patient and, and kept knocking at the door. And eventually in the second half, those chances came. You saw a difference, a variance of, you know, plays from wide. This is the goal here where it's headed down and Sean gets a, a nice little flick on. Great ball in from Rapol. Wiedemann knocks down and McCauley's there to finish. Right, you know, literally 30 seconds after that, long thread from St. Louis. Ball gets cleared, doesn't, you know, come out of the box. The forward does a great job of kind of striking. And within a five minute period, you think it's done, it's over, it's 1-1. Right at the, the end, kind of right on the 90th mark, Sean does a great job of stepping up. From the penalty here, very composed, picks out his corner, three points in the bike. Sean Acoli drills the penalty kick and is the hero with his 13th goal on the season. And his team showed some grit tonight, Kevin. It wasn't easy, they could have let down, certainly the goal to tie it was a letdown, but they didn't. They kept battling and found a way to win. No, they, they show great character, definitely getting the, the you know the three points. But for me, the, the brand that they showed today, they were very exciting. You know, they, they didn't stop from the first whistle to the last whistle. They were knocking on the door and, and credit to all the staff and all the uh, the players. 17,415 saw it. Once again, our final score from Nippert Stadium, FC Cincinnati 2 and St. Louis 1. Our next broadcast of USL Soccer comes your way Saturday, September 17th, when FC Cincinnati welcomes Orlando City B. The action begins at 7 on WSTR and ESPN 1530. For sideline reporter Lindsey Patterson, my broadcast partner Kevin McCloskey, our producer David Asprock, and production manager Mike Bacon, I'm Tom Glitter, saying so long. Good night and happy Labor Day from Nippert Stadium.